is a fair day gone Julius the president Lagos of the Alsatian Lady Council I believe he's, uh, he's around please welcome shall we please give the standing ovation to acknowledge the presence of our chief shepherd his grace most reverend Dr. Alfred Adeyale Martins and let's accord that uh, with a round of applause and make it really inside the place. We welcome your place. As you can see, beside our Chief Shepherd is the guest speaker of the day, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. Let's make welcome Dr. Linus Accord, PhD. Please be seated. Just as we have been told, we have very well distinguished personalities here today. And may I once again request that we please give a standing ovation to acknowledge the presence of uh, Archbishop Emeritus is Eminence Anthony Cardinal Bonobuni Okoche. Can I get to myself in a third place? Thank you for my side. it is not in our character to stress you but even if we decide not to stress you you will indeed want to stress yourself that's why you're here today because our gathering here today is for just a noble cause one more time please give your for his eminence and I'm going alongside his eminence his grace Also on the high table, 
permit me to welcome very Reverend Monsignor Bernard Okodua. We shall be giving a special attention to Monsignor Okodua in the course of the event for reasons well known to some of us. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, today is Monsignor's birthday. I hear wishes said happy birthday in advance, happy days in advance, happy that in advance. When it is fully paid, I don't know. It is always in advance. Uh, we have on the high table Monsignor Obayomi. Can you please put our hands together for me? He's the Dean of Ikeja Tinari. We also have uh, Monsignor who is always looking calm and he looks quite younger than his age. I have the uh, permission to say that. Yes. We have now this very remarkable Gabriel Amalebe. I remember quite a few things about him, but I, I'm, I'm tempted to say it, but I won't say them now. Probably after the event, I'll say it. Uh, we have on the high table also the Episcopal Vicar Lekki region. Please join me to make a welcome very Reverend Monsignor Professor Francis Michela Ogumodede. He is a parish priest assistant from James Lekin. Uh, we did announce before, and we we'll just very quickly reiterate, representing the Bishop of Abel Uta Diocese. We have in our midst, very Reverend Father Emmanuel Oriomi. Permit me to also recognize our niece, the Chancellor of the Archdiocese of Lagos, very Reverend Monsignor Obala. Please put us together for me. Yes, uh, we will continue to recognize our distinguished guests, our fathers in faith, as the event progresses. But permit me to drive out of the lane of recognizing our priests and then go on with that of the lay faithful who would collaborate with our fathers of faith towards making sure that this event turns out a success. The chairman of the, of the day, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, shall you please put your hands together for Senator Mike Ajayi the distinguished senator of the Federal Republic, until he is on his way. We'd also like to welcome our Royal Mother of the Day, our Royal Majesty, the Relief Abuela Dosu. Let's put our hands together for her. Our Mother of the Day, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, is none other than Chief Barrister Mrs. Philomena Amarotero. For the records, this one I will call because I know she will not sit. She's amongst those persons caught from the fabric of not sitting in one place and always moving about, trying to ensure that everything turns out well. The Chairperson Planning Committee, who is the immediate past president of the Lady Council Catholic Archdiocese of Lagos, please join me to welcome Mrs. Chizude Geraldine Ibarongo. Once again, it's uh, the, uh, the 15th edition of the Anthony Cardinal Okoji Foundation Annual Lecture. And the theme for today is Salvaging a Bruised and Battered Nation. This could not have come at a better time than today, especially uh, as we mark the two-year anniversary of that ugly incident that took place at Lekito Gate. 
some two years ago. So it is indeed another part of what emphasizes a bruised and battered nation. And to think that coming here this morning, I had an accident on my way, and my headlamp is is not only bruised but battered. That also further corroborates the bruised and battered nation, because that took place because of somebody's reckless driving. Having said that, I shall only request that you please rise on our feet for the national anthem. Apologies, apologies. We shall have the opening prayer before the national anthem. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we give all glory to God that we are here once again. That's what is privileged last year and has given it. So we thank Him so much. And we thank God for our Father, who we are still celebrating. Thank God for all He has done and all that He is still doing. For all of us who are gathered here, we have the pleasure of God to be here. We have blessed to be with us to the end of this program. And for that, we give glory to the Father. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, and the Lady Mother of the Church. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We shall remain standing for the national anthem. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of the gentlemen of the press, especially our own dear Lumen Christie Television Network. Can we please put our hands together for them? It is time to be welcomed. And who does this better than the acting chairman of the foundation that has gathered us here together today to achieve a noble cause? I'm talking about the acting chairman, Anthony Cardinal 
Okoje Foundation Board of Trustees. If your hands are not too busy, please join me to welcome to the podium very Reverend Monsignor Jiro Odoto. Yes, I'm told the acting chairman has had to quickly step out to attend to something extremely important. And so standing in for him is the director of the Lay Apostolate Centre, Catholic Archdiocese of Lagos, who is also the chaplain Lady Council of Catholic Archdiocese of Lagos. Please just put your hands together for the Reverend Father Aysen Ibe. Excellencies, the speaker of today, very good fathers, very sisters, our invited guests, brothers and sisters, I stand here on behalf of the acting chairman of the Anthony Cardinal Okoje Foundation Board of Trustees, who is unavoidably uh, absent at this very moment, is a little bit indisposed. So I want to welcome each and every one of us on behalf of very Reverend Monsignor Jerry Odoto. It is with great honor and joy that we thank God the Almighty for making our gathering today a reality. May his name be praised, honored, glorified every day of our lives, both now and forevermore. The theme for our gathering today is salvaging a bruised and battered nation. As a nation, you all will agree that we are bruised, we are battered from every aspect of our lives as a people. There is no solace, it seems, for us. Our social, economic, educational, political and religious lifestyles are daily bewildered by threats, stress and frustration. The question, I'm sure, that is in the heart of every Nigerian is, can we be salvaged? Well, that is a very, very big task, I believe, for our guest speaker. And I think that we are left at the mercy of God if we do not find an answer to this very big question. There, my dear revered gentlemen and ladies, your presence here today are just to your conviction that with God on our side, our victory is assured. May our hope never be in vain through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let your voter's card, let your conscience rather guide your voter's card in making a decision come next year at the polls in the 2023 general elections. As we launch and donate today, the Anthony Cardinal Koji Foundation, let us remember that the one for whom we are all gathered in his honor, his eminence, Anthony Cardinal Koji, is ever firm and resolute. He is a principled father of the church, as we all know him to be. Therefore, the scholarship 
which we know is for indigent students, those who we know are very, very intelligent but have very little means to support their education, is the reason for which we carry out our launching once again, as we do every year. And so on behalf of Monsignor Huizu Actin Chanan, on behalf of the Anthony Kanyalokoje Foundation Board of Trustees, I sincerely appeal for your generous donations today when that time comes. Right now, we will give the stage for, of course, the next item on our program. So once again, I say welcome to you all. God bless you and thank you for listening. Can we do better than we have just done? Yes, um, very quickly, permit me to run through some recognitions. Once again, we had called before, we'd like to call again, as she has uh, arrived after she was called initially. Uh, we have the mother of the day here present with us now, the person of Paris Archive, Mrs. Philomena Omorodia. Please, we'd like you to come and take your reserved seat on the high table. Let's make it resign now. We still have a host of others we're expecting. Permit me to at this juncture recognize the representatives, of course, led by the president, the CMO of Public Archdiocese of Lagos, where is that Vincent Tutino? CMO? Please make it loud, that's my constituency. CMO? Christ is our leader. We welcome our fathers. Through Mary, our mother. We'd like to recognize our niece, uh, the members of the CWO, I can see here, Lady Abulingen, the coordinator of CWO, Maryland Deanery. Please let's put our hands together for her. Thank you very much, mothers. And uh, we have here with us, do we have the representative of Sion? For God and for youth? For God and for youth? Okay, they are the ones uh, running the errands. Sion, you're welcome. With children all over the world. Let's see them, let's see them, please. Stand up for recognition. Oh, okay, these are the children. <laughs> Actually, the children themselves are in school, right about now, so their facilitators are here to represent uh, uh, them. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for them. Uh, very importantly, I'd like to request that we celebrate our niece the representatives of the Papal Knights and Medalists. Please put your hands together for them. Um, I, I missed this. And, uh, it is quite deliberate to an extent because each time I see them, there's this sort of guilt that envelops me because I feel like I denied my wife the opportunity to join them. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate the Reverend Sisters in our midst. Just put your hands together for them. Sisters, you're welcome. God bless you. I'll ask my wife if she's still interested. More importantly, this event is an opportunity for us to pull resources together to send in indigent students to access quality education that will in turn better their lives for the future. And so I humbly request all the Catholic schools here present today to please rise on their feet and let us have us celebrate your presence. All the Catholic schools will have uh, St. Gregory of Anime, Nikoi Southwest, sorry. Uh, we have New uh, Wood Girls, Oppress. Wow. Fadayan is doing well. Uh, we have the old girls, we have uh, sacred arts. I do not have all the names on my head as of now. I'll do it to get the list and then do a run out of it. Please, one more time, let's give it up for the children. It is my singular honor, please be seated, to once again recognize and invite to the high table 
the representative of the executive governor of Lagos State, Engineer Joe Ibukwe. Let's put our hands together for him. That's, that's, that's the man that is quite popular than he looks. You're welcome, sir. Special guests, just very quickly. We still have not seen a good number of them, and uh, we hope they will join us in due course. Time will not permit that we run through all of the names, especially for those that are not here. So, as soon as they arrive, we shall give them due recognition. We now proceed to the next item on the program which is not expressly indicated as written on the brochure. It is said that he who brings cola brings life. We shall have presentation of cola for blessing and uh, we shall have it authorized for digestion. Shall we have the cola presented? life. He who brings Coca-Cola brings what? You can discuss that. Cola is now presented to his eminence. Please wait for blessing. Lord, we thank you for this Cola. Sign of our unity, sign of our friendship, sign of the love that we bear, the love that we have for you and have for one another. Bless this cola, O oh Lord. Make it continue to bind us. Make it continue to be an instrument by which we are bound to Christ and one another. In all things, as we eat this cola, may your name be glorified. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will observe that his Grace has just blessed the cola, but there's one aspect that he cannot do or perform. When cola is presented, it is blessed and broken. And because our chief shepherd, of course, is a priest, they don't break cola. They only break bread during Mass. So breaking of cola is for the lay faithful. And so the cola, having uh, received God's blessings, shall be passed on to we the lay faithful for breaking and digestion and uh, yes and when i say breaking breaking is in different categories we shall practically break it from our pockets and i'm so happy the representative of the executive governor is a red cap chief as obviously uh, seen and our fathers in the church, the CMO, they are well ready to drive us through this route. May I only request that we have the CMO president as the first father in the archdiocese. Please rise up to this killing and lead us through it. Barrister Vincent Ochoa. I know this is taking you on our way. But that is how responsibility takes fathers on our ways. Because after you pay school fees, at the point of trying to recover, you realize they're already on meet and break. And another school fees is knocking on your door. 
So please take, to the, take the caller to the CMO table. And when I say CMO, it is not only for men on the CMO uniform. Remember the proceeds of this event is to be channeled towards educating indigent students. Not necessarily Catholics, but humans like us. Do we have POS? We have POS, we have ATM machine. If they need it from this bank, we have it available. 50,000. 50,000. Thank you very much, our fathers. You never disappoint. Thank you. Now, for the readers, women don't break polar, but they support those who break polar. So, mothers are appealing to you to lend your voice to this noble cause. Yes. Yes. Um, we shall allow the executive governor's representative to take his time. He's just arriving. He's yet to recover from traffic. Please feel relaxed. And then let's go, we have the Papa Knights, we have members of the Lady Council. In no particular order, please we can identify with this. And we want to make it as brief as possible. And uh, we advise the ushers to pass around some slips so that people who may want to be a part of this can indicate to what extent they wish to and that we have it announced quickly in the course of the event so that we don't bore you with breaking of cola so that cola yeah. does not turn to cola He who brings cola brings life 20,000 20,000 naira thank you god bless you sir as you do for your society or organization you can do for yourself hence salvation is personal next Please, quickly. state of mind, don't be silly, has too many. It is either an insult or an advice. Please, if you have your, if you have gotten your PVC, can you please indicate, if you have your PVC, please indicate, Catholics, you have your PVC, indicate this. Thank you. Please put down your hands. If you have your voter's card, can I see indicate? I'm asking because I have the both. Thank you very much, sir. I have both. Mom. So while the cola breaking is ongoing on the background, we appeal to your conscience to please try to be a particular of this exercise. We shall move quickly to the next item on the government program. And if the women are ready, we shall have them come up now and do their welcome dance. Confraternity of Christian Mothers, Catholic Church of the Divine Mercy, are they ready? Alright, they are not ready, so we move on to the next item on the program. And please, we would like the cola to be done possibly in a Bluetooth format because of the next item on the program. We wouldn't want cola to be a distraction. Please. You can do an SMS relate to us almost unnoticed because we shall all sit, relax and be very attentive to listen to the voice of our Chief Shepherd as he gives his keynote address. Permit me to welcome to the podium His Grace, Most Reverend Dr. Alfred Adewale Martins, the Metropolitan City of Lagos. Make it resound the place.
your eminence, your lordships, monsignori, fathers, sisters, other brothers and sisters, distinguished guests who have come to join us today. It is my joy to join my voice to those of the acting chairman who has welcomed us to this event. This is an annual event in honor of our Archbishop Emeritus, Anthony Cardinal Olubumi Okoje. This event has been holding for 15 years. And we thank the Lord that in these 15 years, the foundation has been meeting the purpose for which it was set up. First of all, set up to celebrate the life and the achievements of our patriarch, Anthony Cardinal Okoje. He was our Archbishop for 39 years before he retired in 2012. He became a Cardinal and that will be 20 years next year. Oh, was it 10? Next year, by the grace of God, 2013, 2023, 10 years, by the grace of God. And uh, he has dedicated his life to the service of God and humanity in all those years. And so, the celebration that we have been having, therefore, have very well demonstrated our appreciation of all that God has done and He has done by the grace of God over those years. The second purpose which this event has fulfilled is to provide assistance for children who come from indigent families so that they can go to school, have good education, and therefore have a future that is bright, a future that is beneficial to them and to the nation. And that is why I use this opportunity again to say thank you to all those who over the years have been supporting us in generating the funds that are needed in order to give scholarships to children and young people from indigent homes. I pray that God will bless you all and that God will continue to provide for you in your own various needs as you provide for these indigent children who have been receiving or children from indigent families who have been receiving scholarships in these 15 years. Of course, the third purpose for the foundation is to create a forum by which the Archdiocese can engage with issues, issues that are of importance to the social, economic and political development of our country, our beloved Nigeria. So as mentioned incidentally, today marks the second anniversary of that day where many young people protesting against bad governance as manifested in police brutality were murdered. Of course we know that before the event was hijacked, many people had also been put had also been murdered by miscreants who hijacked the protest. It is significant therefore that on this day such as this is a day that we are gathered to discuss salvaging a battered and bruised nations. The theme for which we are gathered is important and very relevant, particularly as we look forward to the forthcoming general elections. As a nation, we have faced a lot of challenges, including banditry, mismanagement of public funds, marginalization of the poor, inequality, and strong feelings of exclusion from different sectors of our nation. This is a time, therefore, that we are given another opportunity as elections are coming to save our dear nation from crumbling more than it has already. Of course, it is easy to point accusing fingers at government, blaming all our woes on government's inability to steer the ship of the nation in the right direction. 
is easy to blame it on the poor management of our resources and we are right to blame government for those for those negative things that we find in our country because it has responsibility at all levels local state and federal to take care of all the issues that bother our nation so we are right to blame government however we must not forget that the maladies of greed selfishness and corruption that are eating deep into the fabric of the nation cannot be cleared by government alone. Therefore, all hands need to be on deck so that we can save the sinking ship of Nigeria. And that is why the forthcoming elections are so very, very vital for the life of our nation. And that is why our bishops in Nigeria have given us the advice that we engage with those who intend to rule us as a nation engage with them, ask them tough questions about what they need to do, what they want to do to salvage our country. To engage them, ask them tough questions and not allow them to go until they give us answers until they give us answers that are satisfactory. And it is on that basis that we are called upon to vote. To vote for people of integrity people with uh, commitments that we can that people who have shown commitment to common good and people who have demonstrated ability to do the right things for people and for the common person I urge you all of us Christians and people of goodwill to bring the values of Christian, Catholic, social teaching to bear on the politics that is done in our country. We must remind ourselves as Catholics of our obligation to be involved in the political activities of our country. Clergy are not allowed to participate in partisan politics, but we have a responsibility to be interested in what happens to our people, to our faith, to our nation. For the lay faithful, partisan politics is within your realm and we ask you to take interest. To take interest and to contest and to be part of politics from the world level up to as far as the national level. We thank the Lord that we can see some who are engaging in politics partisan politics and seeking political offices. We hope that they will engage other Catholics to engage also in partisan politics so that we can bring the values of Christianity to bear on politics as it is done in our nation. Our country was birthed on the principle of federalism, on the principle of a true federalism. And so we expect that those who participate in partisan politics will always remember this and know that our salvation, salvation of the nation and salvaging of the nations will begin by ensuring, ensuring that we unite the nation and bring those who have grasses with the nation that has presently constituted to recognize that they are part and parcel of this nation. I am sure that our distinguished guest speaker will lead us and direct us on all the other things that we need to do in order that our country can be salvaged. So with these words, I say welcome again to this edition of Anthony Cardinal Olubumi Okoje Foundation Lecture. We pray that it will be a fruitful one and that at the end of it we all shall be fired, fired in zeal to do that which is necessary for the salvaging of our country, Nigeria. Once again, warm welcome and God bless you.
Thank you very much, Your Grace, for welcoming us. Just before I bring up to the podium the representative of the executive governor of Lagos State, uh, a quick one on a lighter note. I did recall a conversation between a little girl of about six years and her father. And the little girl asked her dad, Daddy, how did the human race come about? And the father went scientific in his uh, submission. He said the human evolved um, from that animal called hay, that were products of the hay uh, species of the animal kingdom. And out of curiosity, you know, the, the, the children we give back to these days, they are computer in their own regard. She went to her mother to ask, not convinced by the father's response. He said, Mommy, how did the human race emerge? And the mother went scriptural in her submission. She said, we came into existence after God created Adam and Eve. And this little girl went further to say, Mommy, what you said is different from what Daddy told me. Daddy said, the human race emerged from the animals called him. And the mother simply knew that she is in for something bigger than herself. But she applied wisdom in her response. She said, my dear daughter, what your father explained to you is his own side of the family of the human race. I have just explained to you my own side of the family of the human race. Distinguished guys, ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome to the podium the Executive Governor of Lagos, who is only represented here by the SA Drainage and Water Resources Engineer Joe Ibokwe. Please a round of applause for him. Good morning, everyone. His Eminence, Anthony Cardinal Okoje, Archbishop of uh, Archbishop Emeritus, Catholic Diocese of Lagos. His Grace, Most Reverend Dr. Alfred Adele Martins, Archbishop of Metropolitan City of Lagos. Your Lordships, guest speaker Dr. Maimu Sako, ladies and gentlemen, ladies, society, students, gentlemen of the press. This is a good message by the Governor, Mr. Babati Dabusola Sumolu, at the 2022. To the Cardinal Okoje for this general election. Now, I am delighted to join the Board of Trustees and distinguished ladies and gentlemen at the year 2022 Anthony Cardinal Okoje Foundation annual lecture aimed at raising awareness. Of the value of the gospel, immortalizing the legacy of person of the person of his eminence, Anthony Cardinal Kojiem, Emeritus of Lagos, as well as raising funds for the foundation's activities geared towards financial support for indigenous students in secondary schools and tertiary institutions. I'm pleased to acknowledge your laudable achievements in areas of education, your commitment to ensuring that every child within your sphere, within your sphere of influence is given opportunity to be educated and highly appreciated, is highly appreciated and commendable. The topic of focus this year and I quote, salvaging a bruised and battered nation. Seek to analyze and bring to the fore the resultant effects of the challenges that we are experiencing as a nation. This lecture is timely 
because as stakeholders, we need to deliberate and prefer solutions, especially in the areas that have caused most destruction to the lives of our citizens. I'm very confident that the guest speaker of today, Dr. Lionel Sarko, an erudite scholar in the finance tradition, and an expert in the field of sociology, would do justice to the topic and help us to shark new ways of mitigating the social impacts of crisis in our, in our state, in particular, and our country as a whole. Apart from the global economic crisis the world is experiencing, largely due to the effects of COVID-19, and escalated by the Russian-Ukraine war, our kind has an addition to this, being grappling with ethnic, ethnic issues, ethnicity issues, terrorism, and insecurity issues. And then with our infrastructure, infrastructure issues. I always get a sense of peace and confidence when I'm invited by the church to rub my hands on the issues that concern the welfare of the citizens because I am assured of their committed support and of, of their committed support to our administration towards achieving the labels of our collective desires and dreams. As a government, we are aware that the church is a primary point of contact that has an intimate relationship with the people and that is why we deem it crucial to maintain an intimate relationship with them so as to gain better insight on the impact of governance. As a responsive and responsible government, we have improved operational capacities of security agencies in the state and can confidently say that Lagos is safe and more secure. We have commissioned newly constructed and equipped police stations in the Bajuleki area of the legal state, as well as renovated and upgraded equipment in the Department of State Security Office at the Mosholo Government Area. This is a clear demonstration of our administration's commitment to the security of lives and property of the people of Lagos State, as enunciated in the security and government governance pillar of our tenants' development agenda. It is a well-known fact that ethnic discrimination is a pain to the development of any society. It can easily, it can easily eat through the very fabric of society and hinder the people from flourishing. I'm proud to state that religious communities have continued to use their good influences to encourage people to shun discrimination in all its ramifications and always seal for peace. That is why Lagos State has maintained a leading position in promoting at all levels and spheres of life, and promoting peace in all areas and spheres of life. And we will not relent in our efforts to promote peaceful coexistence and inclusiveness in every strata of our society. In addition, our administration has continued to work tirelessly to improve infrastructure in, the, in various sectors across the state, the dividends of which we will soon reap abundantly. Let me at this juncture commend the Board of Trustees and the Planning Committee of the Antonio Koje Foundation. Anthony Kandalokoje Foundation for sustaining the dream of the founding fathers in ensuring that this annual lecture continues to hold and remain relevant in governance. I think and thank you for keeping in step with our administration and being a key feedback mechanism for the people and the government. While looking forward to the outcome of the lecture, it is my sincere prayer that all our efforts towards the success of, of our country 
will be crowned with resounding success and prosperity. And posterity. And posterity will acknowledge the gains we will achieve. I thank you for listening. And finally, I was here a few years back on the same assignments. And um, I know that governor placed some money. And I know that I brought the money here. Uh, he has asked me again, since he has to do with education and building and society, to make a pledge of five million on behalf of Niger State Government. I thank you for listening, and I hope that at the end of the day, we we'll walk away with so many um, advice that will push our nation forward. And I hope Nigeria will be great again. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Sir Papa G.D. Sonwolu, ably represented by Engineer Joe Ibokwe, and donating a sum of five million naira to the Anthony Cardinal Kukwege Foundation. We thank you. Well, let's come to the lecture proper. Our lecturer today is a very distinguished criminologist. Dr. Linus Acker, a senior lecturer and a criminologist in the Department of Sociology, Faculty of Management and Social Sciences, Federal University, Kuzo, Zamfara State. He obtained his PhD in sociology with specialization in criminology in 2013 from the Kogi State University's Anyimba and MSc Sociology with bias in Criminology from the University of Nigeria in Suka. He received his BSc in Sociology in the first class, with first class honors from the Usman Danfordia University in Sapoto in 1995. Dr. Arthur's area of teaching and research include, but not limited to, organized crime, victimology, cyber criminology, social deviance, sociology of the third world, social inequality and mobility, sociology of crime and delinquency, and history of social thoughts amongst others. He is the chairman of the faculty seminar and workshop committee of the Faculty of Management and Social Sciences, Federal University, Kuzo. Dr. Ako was on the teaching staff of the Kogi State University, Aiba, from 2002 to 2017. While there, he served as a pioneer deputy director center for pedigree and diploma studies of the university from 2009 to November 2012. A prolific writer, Dr. Rako is a co-editor of the book Perspectives on Nigerian Peoples and Culture, as well as co-author of A Decade of Democracy in Nigeria, 1999 to 2009. Issues, Challenges, Prospects of Consolidation, published by Aboki Publishers 2005, and 2010. Dr. Rako is a member of the Nigerian Sociological and Anthropological pra Practitioners Association, NASA, and the Nigerian Society of Criminology, NSC. He is a widely published author and peer reviewed with high index national and international journals. A devoted Catholic. Christian, practicing Catholic, Dr. Rako is an active member of the Catholic Men's Organization, CMO, and the Igala All Saints Catholic Association of Our Lady of Fatima Catholic Church, 
Brazil Zamfara State. He was also the secretary of the Chaplaincy Council of St. Augustine's Catholic Chaplaincy, Kogi State University, Anhinga, from 2010 to 2017. He's happily married and the union is blessed with four children. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a lecturer for the day, Dr. Linus Ako. His Eminence, Anthony Cardinal Okoje, Archbishop Emeritus, His Grace, Most Reverend Dr. Alfred Adewale Martins, the Archbishop and Chief Sefrag of the Lagos Metropolitan See, the Chairman and Members of the Board of Trustees, of the Anthony Cardinal Okoje Foundation Lecture, members of the Planning Committee of the 2022 edition of the Anthony Cardinal Okoje Foundation Lecture, the Chairperson and members of the Executive Committee of the Lagos Archdiocese and Lady Council. My Lords, spiritual and temporal, all bishops here present, the priests and the religious, the chairman of the occasion, as well as the chair lady of the occasion, distinguished invited guests, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I bring you Good tidings from Our Lady of Fatima Catholic Church, Gusou Zamfara State. Whenever the name Gusou is mentioned, people feel a sense of trepidation because in the last five years, that part of the country has become the epicenter of terrorism, abduction, kidnapping, hopelessness. But I want to assure all of us that the body of Christ is very strong and alive in Gusou, Zamfara State. We have refused to be dampened by the activities of enemies of the nation who have literally made life unbearable for law-abiding citizens in that part of the country. I want to appreciate the planning committee for finding me worthy to be the guest lecturer at the 15th edition of the Anthony Cardinal Okoji Lecture Series. I have a personal confession to make. I feel fulfilled this morning to be able to see flesh and blood His Eminence Anthony Cardinal Lokoji. I started reading about him some 30 years ago. And each time he interrogated issues about the country, you could see in him a man who was passionate about a better Nigeria. Literally, if he spoke, the rest of the country would catch cold. 
His interventions were not meant to denigrate any individual or group, but they were meant to set the record straight and push this country to the frontiers of development, unity, equity, and social justice. And therefore, when this invitation was extended to me about a month plus ago, I asked myself, you couldn't have had any reason not to honor this invitation. I gave my word, and to God be the glory, I am here today. I am going to talk on the theme for this lecture, which is Salvaging a Bruised and Battered Nation. From the theme, you will agree with me that all is not well with Nigeria as a nation. Politically, Nigeria is a federation of 36 states, 774 local government areas, and six geopolitical zones, namely North Central, North East, North West, South South, South East, and South West, respectfully. By current estimates, the country's population is put at about 218.5 million people. Nigeria has four groups, majorly the Yoruba, the Hausa, the Igbo, and the Fulani, who make up to the third of the country's population. There are over 300 ethnic groups in Nigeria. Apart from the four that I have mentioned, we have some other uh, groups like the Ekoi, Edo, Idibio, Idoma, and the rest of them. The importance of Nigeria lies in the fact that one in every six black person in the world is a Nigerian. Nigeria is a land of contrasts and a melting pot of ethnic nationalities. And it ranks among the foremost political and economic blocks in Africa. Nigeria is counted as the giant of Africa. And until recently, Nigeria was the largest oil producer on the continent and number six in the world. The country is blessed with a very youthful population in the age bracket of 15 to 35. And that population is put at about 64 million people. Sadly, however, despite these great human and natural resources, our great country, Nigeria, is poor. 47% of 83 million Nigerians live on less than $381.75 or 137430 naira per year. When you break this down to the daily income, what that means is that this population of 83 million live on $1.05 dollars or 376.52 kobo per day. With the cost of living now, I want to imagine how much 376.52 can provide for a family of, say, the husband, wife, and four children. Your guess is as good as mine. This figure falls far short of the global average of $6,500 or $17.81 per day. Our country is not only ranked as number 152 out of 188 on the Human Development Index. It is the poverty capital of the world. Beating India 
to the second position from that on enviable uh, position. The property profile of Nigeria has remained as bad as it can be, even as I speak to us. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with such profound human, natural, economic, and political endowments, the questions we should ask ourselves is where did we miss the train? And how did we get to our present precarious position? To say that Nigeria is bruised and battered is putting it very mildly. In fact, some analysts have likened Nigeria to a not engine. Fixing a not engine requires a clear and critical diagnosis of the faults that led to the packing up of that car engine. In the case of Nigeria, so I think we can answer this question of how we missed the train or how we got to this sudden things demand that we do a holistic evaluation of our past. This is because, as the saying goes, those who do not remember the past are bound to repeat it. This, therefore, is the focus of my presentation. In doing this, we shall interrogate how well or badly Nigeria has failed in managing or mismanaging the following critical national issues in her 62 years of political independence. Our focus will be on the following leadership, economy, human capital development, corruption, democracy, and politics of exclusion, and lastly, insecurity. Now, we take a look at leadership as it affects Nigeria. There are several volumes in the literature about the concept of leadership. Very often, we hear of summits and workshops being organized by individuals, governments, and corporate organizations to hone the skills of members about leadership and what leadership entails. The reasons for making such investments are not far-fetched. And one of the reasons is that the fortunes of a nation, a society, or a people will rise and fall depending on the type, the quality, and the nature of the leadership of such an individual group or society. Similarly, the success or failure or collapse of individuals, group, and organization is equally dependent on the type of its leadership. Now the question is, what is leadership? And what does it mean for one to lead? Universally, there is no single acceptable definition of the concept of leadership. However, notwithstanding the lack of common words on the concept, we shall pick one or two definitions of leadership as provided by scholars. One of such scholars is Word, who defines leadership as the act of motivating a group of people to work towards achieving a common goal and not a selfish objective. Not house sees leadership as a process of getting things done through people. It means taking responsibility. It means having passion or purpose for the mission of an organization. The implication of the foregoing is that leadership has to do with the ability of the leader to show the right path to the group 
or people he leads to be able to make them see the need to go the way he wants them to go. Now, who is a leader? And what are the attributes of a good leader? In simple terms, we can regard a leader as somebody who leads. But leadership is a very serious phenomenon that we cannot just locate into that simplistic definition of somebody who leads. Brother Chill, for instance, says a leader is one or more people who select, equip, and influence one or more followers who have diverse gifts, abilities, skills, and focus, and focus the followers' gaze on the organization's mission and objectives, causing the followers to willingly and enthusiastically expand spiritual, emotional, and physical energy in a concerted and coordinated effort to achieve the organization's mission and objectives. Let me come quickly to the situation in Nigeria, the leadership question in Nigeria. As we noted in the introduction, Nigeria is a land that is literally flowing with the proverbial uh, milk and honey. Nigeria is the envy of many nations because of our enormous human and material resources. Sadly, however, despite this humongous endowment, the country is rated as one of the least developed in the world. Even though this is a big contradiction, it is easy to situate this contradiction within the prism of the country's leadership architecture. A major problem that is associated with Nigeria is the nature of the leaders who have ruled the country, be they civilian or military. Chinua Achebe, one of Nigeria's iconic and celebrated literary giants, acknowledged this much in his equally delectable book, which entitled the, the Trouble with Nigeria. In that book, Achebe said, and let me please quote exactly what he has said, so that the sense we want to drive will sink into us. He said the trouble with Nigeria is simply and squarely a failure of leadership. There is nothing basically wrong with the Nigerian character. There is nothing wrong with the Nigerian land or climate or water or air or anything else. The Nigerian problem is the unwillingness or inability of its leaders to rise to the responsibility to the challenge of personal example, which are the hallmarks of true leadership. This is how Chino Achebe captured the trouble with Nigeria. And if you open up what he has said, it is obvious that a loss is required of the leadership in Nigeria. While other nations are blessed with charismatic and visionary leaders, Nigeria appears to be bedeviled with what Victor D.K. calls instrumental leaders as against societal leaders. According to D.K., the instrumental leader is the leader who uses power and influence primarily in the pursuit of private goals. To such a leader, community goals are secondary. Such a leader may not be lacking in social or community commitments, but in practice, he gives more consideration to the self over the interests of the society which he governs. Unlike the instrumental leader, a societal leader is visionary, charismatic, and altruistic. He's the type of leader who will resign voluntarily if at any stage he discovers that he has failed the people. It is surprising that in our 62 years history as 
an independent nation. No leader, whether dead or living, has resigned his appointment on account of the fact that he failed to deliver on the mandates he protected to the Nigerian people. However, in Africa, we have a shining example in the late Nelson Mandela, former president of West Appetite, South Africa, who told his people that he was going to rule for a term of five years. And when his time was over, even when people prodded him on, he did not buckle. He left when the ovation was loudest. And today is a shining example of what leadership represents and should be. With the exception of a few first republic leaders, majority of Nigeria's leaders are instrumental leaders. And because this country has had the misfortune of being governed by instrumental leaders, it is not surprising that majority of them have failed us on several fronts. One of such areas is that they have not been able to adequately communicate their vision to the people. And as a result, they have failed to carry us along. A leader that is unable to make his followers to see his vision and key into it is as good as a visionless leader. For instance, while past and present regimes in Nigeria have come up with a number of development plans under such robust titles as Structural Adjustment Program, Vision 2010, Vision 2020, Seven Point Agenda, Three Point Agenda, ETC, such interventions have hardly made little or no difference in the lives of the majority of the people. Many Nigerian leaders have also failed to inspire the masses to good and noble deeds. They have failed to inculcate morality into the people. And because they have failed to do this, what we have is trust deficits in Nigeria. These days, not many people listen to Mr. President's New Year messages. Because past attempts at such messages have either failed to convince the people or they remind us of broken promises. And I wonder how many people will want to be reminded of broken promises all in the name of listening to Mr. President when he's giving his New Year messages. That is the problem of leadership in Nigeria. Now we move on to another critical element in this discourse. 